After a turbulent 2020 and the closure of our business, we work in tourism, we were like, what about that crazy idea of buying a property? We can't do it in England anymore, so why not get one in Portugal instead? And so we did. We got a yep. property in Portugal! Hey. Woo! <laughs> we are Omar and Andrea, and while our tour company is on standby due to current events, we have escaped to central Portugal to build our dream home closer to nature. We call ourselves Indigo Travel, so we found it appropriate to name this channel the Indigo Escape. Before we show you the property, we have to warn you about something. It hasn't been lived in for 20 years. It's definitely a ruin, but we have a lot of free time to do the task and getting into great shape. So this is the first project of this magnitude we have done ever, but we're really excited about it. So come on, see the house. The house is located in central Portugal, about 15 minutes away from the city of Coimbra, two and a half hours away from Lisbon and around the same to the nearest airports. We didn't want to be in the middle of nowhere, so we're just under 10 minutes from the nearest town of Villanova de Poeres. The land is almost a square and it's about 3,500 square meters. It has three articles, two considered rustic and one urban. We'll tell you about the outside of the house first. We have the Ada area, the granny annex and the actual land. This is the era and it was used for drying crops. It will also be the place where we put our container, our little house, and at the moment we're putting foundations or footings for it to be placed on. The second area outside the house is this area over here, we're calling it the granny annex. We're planning to build a self-contained flat which may in the future provide us with a side income. Also a great addition to receive family and friends. Here we have the land. To be exact, it's 3,490 meters squared and it, the soil is incredibly fertile. It's got fantastic solar exposure and we've got a very big variety of trees here. Uh, the trees include 20 olive trees, we have cork oaks, pine trees, chestnuts, wine grapes, orange trees, bay trees and probably quite a few more that I'm not naming right now. So over here I found an owl pellet and basically owls they'll come over and eat lots of mice, digest them and they can't digest their bones or their fur and so it, they cough it up like a giant hairball and uh, it's a good way of knowing what kind of little wildlife lives in your area is if you find these it's much easier to survey uh, the small mammals that live on your land and so if I was really eager I would tear this pellet apart and analyze all of the skulls to see what kind of mice I have. Sure, why not? A hobby. <laughs> okay. So here we have the entrance to the courtyard and I wanted to show you one of the walls that needs attention. Over here you can see it's collapsing. So this wall would need to be taken down eventually and rebuilt. But luckily in Portugal things like that aren't that expensive. a courtyard so we're quite excited about this we're planning to do some portuguese limestone paving hopefully to be a social area in our house here we have what i like to think of as the chill out area we're going to have hammocks we're going to make the water tank over there into a, light, a nice little swimming pool And uh, we're just going to make this the most awesome place to come out in the middle of the day when it's too hot to do anything else. Come on. 
and then a much more interesting room over here which will become an office one day. Or our guest room. Quick break having here at the land some really lovely curry Omar made. Look at that beautiful curry. Butter chicken. Butter chicken. Thank you Omar. Unfortunately, this side of the outbuilding has seen better days. This beam is not in great condition and the roof is standing on this side, making this paved area a sort of veranda. It was about to collapse, therefore we decided to take it down before it did by itself, causing an accident. The first room seems it was used as a dining room. The roof will need to be replaced, likely adding skylights to bring in light and in addition install very insulated types of tiles. The walls are in better shape than they seem. This side was a kitchen. There is a very lowly built fireplace on this corner, which will be taken down. We're thinking about making these two areas into a pantry room and a half bathroom. This side will be united with the larger part of the outbuildings coming next. There is a stone oven at the end of the room, some suggesting to keep it, but we aren't convinced yet its restoration will be worth it. Here is the biggest of the outbuildings and one day this will become our living quarters. So we plan on making this into a one giant room which includes a kitchen, a utility room, a toilet, a lounge and possibly another room, we're not sure yet. Now this wall over here we plan on bringing down and putting in some French doors so we can outlook to, towards the land. And then over here, this wall, we're going to take completely out and so the next room will be absorbed into this room and we'll have a much bigger space. I'm going to show you what I mean with the French doors. <laughs> here we have the other side of that wall which is out looking towards the land. Here it is. So this is the main house of the property and it was constructed in 1926, therefore it's exempt from habitational license. It hasn't been lived in since 1997. So upstairs we've got four rooms. Once we've settled in the container on the era, we plan on transforming this room into something more suitable for living. We had to take the ceilings out because when we first arrived here, we noticed there were a lot of leaks. And so we pulled the ceiling down and we rejuggled all of the tiles um, to stop the majority of those leaks. We plan on painting everything and insulating, maybe making a small fireplace and perhaps even putting our bed in here until we have something more suitable. Over here we have two smaller rooms. Uh, the plan is, is to make them larger, which shouldn't be too difficult once the roof is off because these walls over here, they're brick and they only go as far as this floor here, as opposed to the wall over here, which is all rock. This one goes, this is a supporting wall and it goes all the way down to the ground. So later on, we're probably going to be looking at quite a narrow corridor over here, two much bigger rooms and then a toilet over here. We're not sure yet whether we're going to put a door. Uh, we'll have to ask an engineer and uh, ask them for their opinion before we proceed.
The area below the house is called the Adega. It's traditionally used to store wine. Sometimes animals were also kept here. We aren't sure yet what to do with the Adega, so at the moment it will most likely be used for storage and perhaps enjoy during the summer when it will be the coldest area of the house. <laughs> As you can see, there is lots to plan, lots to learn and lots to do. But first, we need to really get ready for our container to be moved here. How much do you think we paid for the property? Let us know in the comments below. Hopefully you don't think that we overpaid for it. Thank you for watching and join us here in our journey in Portugal. See you soon.